Good day. Welcome. This is your daily med with Lady V. Today's session we will talk about the wrath of God. Today I'll be reading from Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 39 through 41. It says, See now that I myself am he. There is no God besides me. I put to death and I bring to life. I have wounded and I will heal. And no one can deliver out of my hand. I lift my hand to heaven and sovereignly swear as surely as I live forever. When I sharpen my flashing sword and my hand grasp it in judgment, I will take vengeance on my adversaries and repay those who hate me. This is the word of the Lord. Today we are talking about God's wrath. God's moral perfection requires him to show displeasure against anything or anyone who seeks to act contrary to his moral purpose. God judges that which rebels or he who rebels against his authority as creator and Lord. Psalm 103 verse 8 and 9. Romans 21 and verse 5. God is holy. He hates all sin. And because he hates all sin, his anger burn against the sinner. The nature of God makes hell a reality, just as heaven is a reality. The wrath of God is eternal detestation of all unrighteousness, is displeasure, and is righteous indignation burns against all forms of evil. Sin is a rebellion against God's authority. Sin is a rebellion against God's sovereignty. Sin is a rebellion against God's government. Disregarding that he is Lord. So by sinning, we despise his majesty and has little or no regard for his wrath. But from today's lesson, we will see that the wrath of God is not malicious. For it does not retaliate and is ready to inflict injury for injury received. God is not vindictive. Romans 1 and verse 18 says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven. So his wrath is revealed through his son Jesus Christ. Psalm 95 and verse 11. But we can choose either his wrath or we can choose salvation, which comes through grace. The divine wrath is God's righteous anger and punishment when being provoked by sin. We will see from today's lesson that godly wrath is vastly different from the wrath of man. James 1 and verse 20. The wrath of God is always in accordance with the standard that he sets down 
and that standard is in the holy scripture for a man's conduct the warning of how man should live or behave god has given it so when we disobey and we will see that in deuteronomy chapter 28 and deuteronomy chapter 30 then the wrath of god will come the wrath of god is in accordance with the deeds that men have done and his wrath is in always direct proportion to man's sin psalm 28 and verse 4. god's wrath is a slow but controlled not sudden and explosive as man would exodus 39 and verse 6. god's wrath comes after several warnings then is judgment we see that in the days of noah we see it with sodom and gomorrah we see it throughout the old testament with the prophets the wrath of god is always provoked by man's sin deuteronomy 4 verse 25 god's wrath is not exer god's wrath is not exercised in sin but in righteousness because he is a righteous and a holy god romans 2 and verse 5. so today we will look at his wrath in the new testament and his wrath also in the old testament we see in the old testament where god brought the children of israel out of egypt he gave them his laws how they should conduct themselves so that they will live according to his plan and his purpose we see in deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 1 through 14 all the many blessings that God promised. And these blessings would be because of their obedience to the covenant that he had made with them. But we also see in verse 15 through 68. Extensively and graphically how God shows the description of his judgment when they break the covenant and does not live according to his law israel did not keep the covenants and therefore the bible said they would be judged we seen another story in the book of numbers chapter 16 where moses was leading the people and he had these three men who came up against him and think he was not doing right according to their own judgment and the bible says that god judged them judged also those who conspired with them so we see that the divine judgment of god will come when we reject that which god says we ought not we ought to do and do what we ought not to god has a perfect plan for mankind a plan that shows love a plan that shows mercy a, sh a plan that shows grace favor but also there's a plan that shows is divine wrath we see the wrath of God in the New Testament. So we can't say, okay, it is the day of grace and the wrath of God will not come. We see the wrath of God when we read the story in St. Luke about Lazarus. And we know, quite frankly, that God brings into judgment or his wrath upon sinners john the baptist talk about jesus when the messiah was supposed to come john the baptist spoke of the wrath which is to come 
he was talking about the coming of Jesus Christ, uh, the Son of God. One, he spoke of Messiah coming to experience the wrath of God for the sin and the, of men so that they could receive salvation. He also spoke of the wrath that God himself would, would execute upon man when they refuse to accept him as Lord and Savior. But we also see in St. John 3 and verse 36, it says, Whomsoever believe in the Son of God has eternal life, but whoever rejects the Son will not see life, for God's wrath remains on him. So the one who believes in the Son of God will not suffer God's wrath for his sins. Why? Because he has accepted the provision made through Jesus Christ, his Son. Because he died in our place and in our stead. The unbeliever who do not receive him as sovereign Lord and King will be judged on the day of his wrath. Romans 2 verse 5 and 6. So in concluding, God warns human against taking any form of vengeance. Because he is the God who can take vengeance because he is perfect and holy in whatsoever he does. He does. We see for the Christian, those that believe in the doctrine of the wrath of God, that we must be motivated as Christians to evangelize the lost so that the wrath of God would not come on them for remaining in their sins. Next, we have to remember that because of the wrath of God, we should live holy because he is a holy God. And he says, be he holy for I am holy. It means that we understand that God has an hatred for sin. So we should be uncomfortable living in sin. Further, he says, we should not fret ourselves about those who do evil, for he will take care of them. His wrath will come upon evil doers. Lastly, he says, let us take the doctrine of the wrath of God seriously. It is a fearsome and a terrible thing to fall in the hands of God and that means to incur his wrath. So God bless you today as we seek to do whatsoever he says and for those who have not yet known him to accept him because the Bible says if we don't the wrath of God still abides or remain upon us. God bless you and thank you for watching.